The Washington Post new report out today, 1,100 lies and mistruths in October alone, an average of 30 a day. That's a land speed record of lying, people. Yeah. There's no one you know in your life that lies that much. And yet this is from the bully pulpit of the presidency. That's disfiguring to our national debate. Let me just read what the Washington Post says about that. In the first nine months of the presidency, the president lied an average of five times per day. But in the seven weeks leading up to the midterms, it's an average of 30 lies a day. Well, uh, here's Exhibit A. So, Abby, um, they've put out what they call um, a Department of Homeland Security fact sheet about the migrants who are probably roughly 1,000 miles away and coming to the border. They say they, it's just hard to know what's true in here, okay? So one of the things they say is over 270 individuals along the caravan route have criminal histories, including known gang membership. But, Abby, they give no source for how they know this. That's an awfully specific number, but they don't say where they've come up with this, who is telling them this. And the reason that they've lost the authority, I think, for us to believe them, is because Kirstjen Nielsen, the head of uh, Homeland Security, said something like this on June 17th. We do not have a policy of separating families at the border, period. That was what she tweeted uh, out on... June 17th. So, you know, millions of people in their own lying eyes were told that they were wrong. So when they put out this so-called fact sheet, it doesn't ring necessarily true to people. That's absolutely right. It, when there are so many lies happening all at once, it's impossible to tell the truth from the lies. That's the biggest problem with this whole uh, environment that we're in right now, is that there should be some level of trust in the federal government and what it says. When, it, when the federal government provides data or information to the public, they ought to be able to say, well, this is probably true. That's not necessarily the case anymore. I mean, even in the case you just mentioned, the, the DHS saying repeatedly there's no policy of separating children from their families. Well, the Office of the Inspector General said that that was not true, that those, those statements were not true, did not reflect what was happening in the department. It's a long-term problem for this administration, you know, beyond immigration, beyond this border issue. Uh, but in the immediate present, I, I think what we're seeing is the whole federal government, and there's been a lot written about this recently, the whole federal government moving to validate things that the president says, whether they are true or not. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an extraordinary thing uh, to see, especially given mm -hmm. how political it is. I think when we heard President Trump say, well, the women want safety, women, women want safety at the border, that was President Trump talking in very political terms from the White House about something uh, that ought to be a matter of, uh, of nonpartisan, you know, information. But it, was re it is really all about politics. The entire federal government is engaged in this effort to bolster his political statements from the White House. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that is also risking yeah. an erosion of trust in the, the right. government that we have that ought to be able to, to function without people assuming that everything coming out of it is R, has an R or a D next to it. But let's also look, I mean, the president is trying to narrow the focus of conversation for this you know, final push in the midterms just to immigration. That is going to have, that is an action and it's going to have a reaction among his most ardent supporters that may have the reaction he wants, but there's a bigger reaction to that. Members of his own party and certainly opponents of his who are calling this out for what it is and journalists calling it out uh, for what it is, which among other things is complete failed policy. I mean, this is a, re a Republican who's led a Republican Congress who hasn't been able to solve the immigration problem, and so this is what you get is, is empty rhetoric. But there's a lot more going on. As, as, as important an issue it is, immigration is to Republican voters, almost 40 percent, so it's significant. There is health care that is certainly a big issue in a lot of these races, particularly in these House races. There's the fact that the stock market, which the president likes to yeah. uh, brag about, has been mm -hmm. so volatile. He's taking on his, uh, his Fed chief. Um, so there's a lot here that, again, I think is rattling the president that has him realizing the only impact he can have is perhaps on Senate races, which are important because so much else appears to be lost for him in his party. I actually had a Republican strategist tell me yesterday that if he were running the Democrats' campaigns, he'd put the stock numbers up, the wild swings, the graph up over the last two weeks because that is what is causing some fear in some of these suburban districts. I just yeah. want to pick up on one thing David said there on how there have been Republicans aghast 
at what the president has done here. Yeah. You know, John Kasich, a gas yesterday at, at that racist and turns out lying video that was sent around by the president. Chuck Hagel, who was a Republican senator from the state of Nebraska, was shocked and appalled by what the president said. And, and by the way, Defense Secretary, shocked and appalled yeah. by what the president said. That Jeff U.S. Blake troops said sickening. I yeah, think sickening. But uh, Hagel was talking about the idea that U.S. troops would shoot migrants coming over the border, throwing stones. And we've had Michael Hayden, we've it's had true. Mark Hurtling, generals saying, "Oh my God, you're asking U.S. troops to do that?" And look, it, that is a moral uh, horror at what the president is saying. And remember, the presidency has historically been primarily a place of moral leadership. There's also a political problem that the president may be backing into, which some Republicans have pointed out. By not campaigning on his objective strengths, on the economy, on jobs, by doubling down on fear and anger to rally the base, he puts a lot of suburban districts in real risk where that kind of talk doesn't benefit Republicans. Now, Democrats shouldn't be too sanguine about this. You know, the, the far left of their party is not where America is on immigration. That said, the president risks courting a real backlash by doubling down, not just on the lies and the nationalist and the divisive rhetoric, but on, on these extreme positions on immigration and language that has made even Republican senators and Secretary of Defense to say, that's way too far, Mr. President. Abby, can I ask you one last question on this subject? Because the White House knows, and Republican strategists know this will be the reaction. They know they will get called out for the lies. They know they will get called out for the racism. But to me, they've made a bet that it doesn't matter. They don't care. And maybe in some cases they want it. They're inviting this debate. Yeah, I think the point here is to have the conversation, to have the argument, and to really have the fight. That's the one thing I think the White House, the president's aides, and the president himself thinks that his, his supporters want the most from him. They want fight. They don't want boring rallies. They don't want him talking about policy. They don't want him talking about the economy. They want him fighting with his adversaries, fighting with, the, with Democrats, fighting against what he's calling an inv invasion. That's not a mistake. That is the Trump allure yeah. in this moment. And it's immigration happens to be the, the most potent way for him to, to stoke that. But the idea here is that he has got to be a fighter in these last few days. And I think that's why the Kavanaugh debate was so great for Republicans, because it showed Trump to be that. Mm. It showed the entire party to be a fighter. So it's not about policy. It's, it's not about policy and it's not about lies. They, there's not enough time for any of that really, I think, to sink in, according to them. Honestly, do they only turn the leaf blower on when Abby's speaking? I'm, I'm setting yes. my watch to it right, right now. There. But, it, but it, right this has been true. Yes. We're going to get you a leaf blower for Christmas. But so Abby, it's been that. that way for 20, 25 years. Like, I mean, every every time yeah. this morning. The White House grounds is the cleanest place yeah. I've ever been. It never, must be. Never better. I really hope so. There are a lot of trees at the White House. Not that many. Not that many. <laughs>